For this video, I've actually rebuilt the 2020 TIE Fighter to compare with it because eventually I will be building this back into an interceptor. The model I did use a handful of extra pieces and the instructions will be on the members discord. The instructions for the mech are already up. I uploaded them again a day early for all the members to see. So technically there's no reason you can't build it along as well as watching this video. But we'll get to the mech in just a second. First off, if you do end up enjoying this video, I would appreciate a like and you might as well subscribe if you find yourself coming back. Now, let's take a look at that mech. The size of the mech isn't actually too far off the size of the 2020 TIE Fighter. Now the 2020 TIE Fighter itself isn't quite mini figure scale. I think the wings are probably about three quarters mini figure scales. This is the size comparison between the 2020 model and the 2012 models actually perfectly mini figure scale. I think there's also a solo TIE Fighter playset that's pretty much the same size as this one, but you can see just in the comparison of the wings there that it is about two thirds, three quarters of the height. This makes probably half the height of an in-universe TIE Fighter, which still is pretty big. And you've probably all already seen Firebird's giant Stormtrooper mech with the massive TIE Fighter shield, which would have been great. I tried it out and then I realized TIE Fighters are known for having the worst shields out of most of in-universe ships. The shields on TIE Fighters are absolutely rubbish and that is because they're charged up with solar panels and shields use not only so much energy but would also reduce the energy they then get to charge the solar panels. It's just so, so ineffective for TIE Fighters. I think the TIE Defenders did have shields and had much bigger batteries and didn't need to charge up as often but Ties in general just weren't known for their shields. So I got rid of the shields and instead had twin blasters. The TIE Fighters do have these twin ion cannons at the bottom of the front bit here. You can see the flick fire missiles are still here as well and they would have had green projectiles in because TIE Fighters shoot out green blasters. So I've included them pistols and that's actually not the only reference to it. You can see here on the crotch area, we've got the two cannons themselves representing obviously the bottom of the cockpit, which is represented on top. Initially, I did have this on the mech, the actual cockpit piece here. It didn't really look like a mech. I wanted to take a bit of inspiration from the Luke X-Wing mech we've only just got. And that cockpit piece really wasn't doing the job. I had to include this black chest piece. It's the same one used on Darth Vader and that also helps the minifigure stop falling out. So I have whacked the tire interceptor cockpit piece actually on the front. I thought that made more sense than an Imperial logo. We need to get it looking like the tight cockpit on the front bit here and you can see it does match the same design. I've even lined it up the same as the actual TIE Fighter. I would have loved to have seen something like this on the X-Wing, perhaps a little slope coming out like the front of the X-Wing, or perhaps they could have even sloped the legs down so they were thinner at the bottom. But the legs and the arms are the biggest giveaway to what this model's meant to represent, because as you can see, I've pretty much copied the design of the wing onto the arms and legs, and I really like how it's turned out. If you can't yet see it, Perhaps I can rearrange the arms and legs a little bit. And now you can better see the shape of the wing. We've even got the gray outlines with the lines connecting it to the center. I have tried to go all out here to get this looking as close to a TIE Fighters wings as possible. But TIE Fighters are still meant to be nimble. They're not going to be the bulkiest of mechs. So I also had to keep the legs and arms as smooth and almost as thin as I could. I did copy the thickness of the legs from Luke's X-Wing mech because once again, as I said in my comparison with that and the Stormtrooper mech, I really like how it's been squared out, but it's nothing bulky. It hasn't used a ton of bricks. On the front here, we've actually got one by four panels, which is the same lining the arms, but 
It sort of looks like that stripe you'll find down the front or the sides of a tracksuit because this TIE Fighter needs to make its way around the battlefield as nimbly as possible. And of course, they'd be sent out in their masses. This one's built after Iden Versio's TIE. You can see she's just in the cockpit there. And the only difference between this regular TIE here and Iden Versio's is three red stripes on the left-hand side. Honestly, that is it. That is what identifies the special forces compared to the regular TIE pilots. So what I've done is included a red sloped piece here with the grill pan. Technically five stripes on that. They did use it for Luke because being red five, he does have five stripes. And I was gonna replace it with one of the flat grills, but to keep in the mech fashion, I'm sure you sort of get the idea with the five stripes there. And there's gonna be some sort of specialist TIE pilot that has five stripes on their TIE. It's a bit similar to how the first order or the final order ties were. One of them had some red around the tie as well. So it's sort of to show off the rank of the pilot or to show how good they are in their field. I'm sure it was used elsewhere as well. The two stud shooters are built identical, almost identical. They're similar size, similar shape to my Captain Rex blasters. In fact, these are actually on a bracket rather than a modified plate. And that is just to keep the pistols looking small. TIE pilots do use pistols, so there is a connection here. Iden Versio used many different weapons. In fact, any weapon you could pick up in Battlefront 2, she was able to use. But I've gone with the pistols to represent the twin ion cannons. Again, it's a mech styled after the TIE fighter. You've not got too many references to the character here, but the back here does look like it could have some sort of droid popping out. That is built to once again resemble the rear end of a TIE fighter. Perhaps I could have even included one of them little black dishes on the back just to make it a bit more accurate to the Lego model. And there's a bit of greebling and other details you'll see around this mech. Now that isn't all for the detail. TIE pilots on the inside do need something to steer the ship. And I think it's something that's been forgotten about for a few of these models. So you can see that they have a few different displays on the front. Again, like with X-Wing, I wasn't able to replicate that, but they also fly with some sort of joystick or joysticks, and that has been able to be replicated on the inside. You can see where Iden's hands are resting. I've included two of these clip, these bar and clip elements. Again, I don't really know the name of them, but I think they do the job to show how Iden is controlling the mech. And it's something that's been left out in all of the previous mech designs. So I'm happy I got to include that. And I think this mech is actually looking pretty cool. There's a few other rarer pieces I've used. This model is not going to be too expensive if you're looking at parting out. As well as the instructions, I do include the parts lists over on Discord just to make it easy for you to upload to Brick Owl, Brick Link, and even Rubricable. They work with pretty much all Lego sites. So you'll have no worries of trying to find these pieces and all the instructions include a list of the parts needed at the end if you wanted to print off and search for your own collection. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. And again, if you wanna check out the instructions for this, they are already up on the members Discord. I'll even leave the name of it in the description so you can search it and don't have to scroll. If you are finding this video later on, be sure if you have liked the video. If you did enjoy, subscribe for more awesome Lego Star Wars mocks and may the bricks be with you always.